Hello everyone, this is Kisa Shreen and today we're going to talk about the shipping industry in context of the environment. Specifically, we'll look at the oil spill and Mauritius. As you may have seen by now, a Japanese ship ran aground the coral reef on the eastern coast of Mauritius, and this is having a devastating impact on the island's environment and economy. More broadly, what is the role of sustainable finance in preventing these disasters that have such a tremendous environmental, environmental impact? Today with us is Jeanette Bergen, head of Responsible Investments at KLP, the largest pension fund in Norway, and she's going to help us sort through this. So, Jeanette, we know the island was a huge tourism spot. About 1.3 million people live there. And right now, the government seems to be responding by temporarily closing schools, and they gave the people who fish there um, a small compensation. What else is going on, and how can this be a use case for the sustainable finance industry as it relates to shipping? Yes, um, uh, thank you for having me. Um, and um, yeah, the, the, the accident in, in uh, the coast of the Mauritius is devastating. And uh, as, a, as a pension fund, we um, manage the pensor, pensions for uh, a lot of people in Norway. And it's invested into um, 7,000 companies in 50 countries. So very often when there is an accident or, or problems are happening around the world, we very often ha is invested in companies involved in this um, in one way or, or another. Also, in this particular case, we are investor in the operator of the ship and uh, currently then trying to follow up um, uh, the, what is happening in Mauritius. So can, can this really be a, a use case in terms of what can be done to prevent it or what we need to be aware of? to prevent these sorts of things from happening? What do you see the lesson learned looking back on it several weeks, yeah. later, several weeks later? Yes, I think it, it, it can absolutely be a good uh, use case. I mean, we're, um, we are always following up when there are serious accidents like this. And um, we are uh, contacting the companies asking, you know, first of all, making sure that they're doing everything they can to um, take responsibility for, for the accident and the consequences. And then second, making sure that they have policies and principles in place to ensure that this is not it's happening again in the future. Um, and uh, all of that, we need to also ensure that um, what the company is saying, what they're doing is actually kind of echoed by the local government, the local people, those affected by by the, the accident. And I think... Um, for the companies, it's good that they have investors and owners that are following up and 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 uh, and asking these questions because they that gives them more um, leverage to do it as well. And what role do you think that the pension funds have here? Clearly, you all have a great deal of leverage, if you will, to influence. So specifically, how does that influence play out? How does that leverage play out? I think that. Um, Investors um, are one stakeholder important to companies, um, and um, they have a lot of pressure, of course, um, and a lot of stakeholders um, asking questions. and And I think um, we are part of that important environment around corporates that uh, want to engage and make them develop in the right direction. and It is an important voice because um, you know there is always. Uh, in the company, there will always be a um, difference of opinion. There will be um, you know, people wanting to do more, people wanting to do less. Um, so it's important to have investors and owners also kind of asking about this, demanding this, because that will give it more um, attention, I think. So let's talk about the government's role. So is there an opportunity to mobilize finance via green bonds to help out with redevelopment here? Have you seen that with this specific example or have you seen that with other similar examples? It's an interesting, interesting question. Um, I haven't seen it in this particular case. I mean, we do. We have had a lot of engagement on uh, deforestation in Brazil. And you now there is uh, some serious um, and variant things happening there as well. And and there we've seen more kind of initiative being taken around green financing and to create opportunities there. But um, I haven't seen it in this case. And um, I think, um, but we'll see. I mean, that could be something that could evolve uh, going forward. 
Yes. And you talk about some of the things that that you can work with companies to do beforehand um, to really be preventative measures. We know that these types of oil spills can have major social as well as health implications in terms of people who are exposed. Could you let us know how we can work through those situations? I guess that's more of the S in the ESG, but how can we work through those situations? Do you see a partnership with the funds, with the government, and with the company? And if so, what does that partnership look like to really manage and reduce the social as well as the health issues that could happen afterwards? Well, I mean, I don't think um, uh, KLP as as an investor in listed companies uh, globally, that wouldn't be our role to to take on such kind of engagement like that. We are invested in companies and we are holding them responsible for them, their actions, their, um, their practices. And and we're trying to follow up and, and make sure that we are doing everything we can to, as an owner of companies, to create an environment for responsible business practice. And I think um, that is, has to be our role in this particular case. Um, but at the same time, I think it's important that investors ask these questions to the companies because still there are very many uncertainties around what happened um, who kind of what what kind of policies and practices and principles do they have in place when things like this happen? I mean, the ship went to ground, I think, 14 days before they started leaking. There's a lot of unanswered questions. And why did they um, why did they sail um, so close to shore when, you know, they got a lot of um, the, the ship um, guard of, of Mauritius were were trying to reach out and say they were going to, to close the shore. So there's a lot of unanswered questions still and and very early to say who's who's kind of responsi- responsible and where is the weak spots. Absolutely. And clearly one of the ways that, that KLP and any fund of this nature, any institutional investor could um, have influence or, as you say, um, really reduce these things from happening is – when they divest. Sounds like you all are in a position to make an example out of firms who, for whatever reason, do not comply. Um, So tell us about that process. When would you choose to divest? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, we follow up, as I've described, uh, when there is a serious accident or something is in breach of our guidelines and we have divest companies if there is an unacceptable risk of contributing to environmental degradation, human rights violation, um, et cetera. And um, so in this particular case, if we don't get um, the answers or a company is unwilling to give information and we think there is a continued risk of environmental degradation or accidents, if they won't uh, improve policies or principles, if they don't take responsibility for the action and they're kind of continuing to do what um, can uh, impose this this uh, risk, we will decide to divest from companies. And an example of that is, you know, the Brazilian mining company Vale that have had uh, two uh, very fatal, serious accidents uh, where tailings dams have breached uh, in Brazil um, over the last uh, five, six years. And um, we did engage in dialogue with them after the first accident and had a lot of good answers. But then after the second, we, um, which was very similar and where they had um, revealed this high risk, but they hadn't done anything about it. And uh, we just said, um, sorry, but uh, this is not uh, acceptable. And we thought still the risk is still high because they have still have a lot of these unstable uh, tailing stamps. So uh, we decided to divest from the company. But that's the last resort. And we rather engage companies and have improved practices because we see that that's where we really can contribute to positive change, which have done uh, as another example with the ship recycling uh, practices in in Bangladesh, Pakistan and, and India, where there is a, an opportunity to really engage companies. So finally, Jeanette, tell us in a few words, why is Norway such an important player here? I think um, one of the, the most important reason why we are such an, uh, such a, I would say, um, clear voice is because of the transparency. We are... Um, in Norway, uh, particularly in the investment industry, very transparent about both the holdings in our pension fund, 
Um, all the holdings are publicly available so the people of Norway can see the investments and know where their pensions are invested. And also because we have very strict uh, ethical guidelines and at the same time we're transparent when we divest the company and the reason why. Um, the, the, the last exclusion we um, uh, published yesterday is the is a company that produces all the swimwear for Speedo, which is very which is accused for human rights violation. And there is a very thorough report uh, from the Norwegian government um, ethical council for the Norwegian government pension fund Global, which is the sovereign wealth fund of Norway. And um, where they document uh, through uh, visits on the factories uh, of this um, uh, producer of swimwear that Speedo is involved in this um, human rights violation. So I think the transparency, which is really important, why we have this uh, this uh, voice, I think, globally on the on ESG and responsible investments. Great, Jeanette. Thank you. So we see investors working with companies to evaluate policies as being a really key factor here. And in fact, the preferred way to move is to engage on solutions and engage on on policies, number one, to prevent accidents are after the fact to identify where the risks are and then moving to make sure that those risks are mitigated. Sounds like divesting is a last resort, but one that many investors are willing to make after the conversations have been had and there just hasn't seemed to be changes made at that point. And also transparency is an important component in Norway, which really makes it a global player. And actually, Jeanette, we're seeing transparency as a key word in many parts of, of the world. So hopefully that will continue. Jeanette, thank you so very much for your time. We invite you to subscribe to the Refinitiv Sustainability Perspectives podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you stream your content. What did you think about the podcast? Leave us a review on iTunes or follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter for updates on our show. You can even check us out on YouTube now. Thank you for joining. See you next time.